Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I am Dr. Shaumitra Das, the founder and chairman of Healthy Climate Initiative, or simply HCI. HCI has the objective of regenerating climate and making it safe and healthy for future generations. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to the Climate Benefit Concert. We are going to watch an amazing show for the next two hours. You will experience music and dances of different genres from different parts of the world. Before we start the program, I would like to say a few words about the reasons for organizing this concert. You all know how climate change is taking a huge toll on humanity. But few of us are aware of how the melting of glaciers in the Himalayas are causing existential crisis for more than one third of humanity. The Himalayas are the third largest deposit of ice and snow in the world after Antarctica and the Arctic. They are melting faster than any other parts of the world. The melting of this glacier is causing extreme floods in South and East Asia. The recent devastating flood in Pakistan is a case in point. This flood drowned one third of the country, causing over 33 million homeless. Many mega cities like Mumbai, Calcutta, Chennai, Dhaka, Ho Chi Minh City, Bangkok, and Shanghai are projected to be underwater by 2050. Melting is also threatening the life of 240 million people who live on the mountains. Hundreds of thousands of people have already deserted their homes and become climate refugees because of the retreating glaciers and ensuing water crisis. The central and eastern Himalayas are projected to be ice-free between 2035 and 2050. These glaciers feed 10 largest rivers in Asia, and nearly 2 billion people depend on these rivers for drinking water, agriculture, hydroelectric power, and 3 billion people consume the food produced in this river basins. The rapid retreat and disappearance of these glaciers would have devastating impacts on these people that could destabilize the region and the world. Therefore, it is essential that we make immediate actions to stop or slow the melting of these glaciers. We cannot wait another 30 or more years for the climate to stabilize. We need to act now. Billions of lives are at stake. Fortunately, there is a potential solution to slow and possibly stop the melting that Dr. Leslie Field and her colleagues have worked on for over a decade. HCI, in collaboration with the Bright Ace Initiative, and Climformatics, along with a team of scientists from different parts of the world, are planning for a full trial of this solution on a Himalayan glacier in India before it can be used to preserve glacial ice. The goal of the concert is to create awareness of this issue, to influence the governments to undertake policies and projects to protect the cryosphere and raise funds for this field dial. This is the genesis of the Climate Benefit Concert. We welcome you to the concert and request you to donate generously to this cause. No amount is small to us. Most importantly, please tell your friends, family, and colleagues about this issue and raise your voice 
to demand projects and policies to preserve the cryosphere. We are all in this together. Thank you for your support and enjoy the show. While the world urgently decarbonizes, we're not saying you can skip that. You can't, we have to get to more sustainable solutions for energy and fuels. But uh, while we do that, um, you know, if we don't slow some of these terrible feedback effects, we're in big, big trouble. And there's really not much time left to make the difference. I've been hearing it remarked that the experts, this is the one field where the experts are more worried than the general populace. And you hear things, you know, we've been hearing things for years, well, we've got till 2100, and then, well, we've got till 2050. Well, this next decade is the last chance we have to make a difference, and more recently I've been hearing, you know, we've really only got three years. It's tempting to just look at this and say, somebody else is going to take care of this. It's very tempting to say that. If not me, who? If not now, when? The solution is to try to replace that lost bright reflect device, that, that function of being able to reflect sunshine. Got a thin shell of silica around, uh, beach sand basically. It is hollow glass microspheres, but it floats. By the time we build up to something like one or two hairs widths of material on top of snow and ice, we can slow down the melt substantially. Every degree matters. Every degree is so worth fighting for. In today's world, the havoc wrought by the indiscriminate use of resources has created a malaise that has affected every aspect of our lives. Mental health issues are on the rise and discontent is also on the rise. Nothing seems to satisfy or make us happy. As we rush through our lives, let us pause for a moment and tune in to nature's music through this segment on classical Indian music. This music is deeply rooted in the natural elements. Ragas reflect the mood of the diurnal cycle and the change of the seasons. Every note, every tal is harmonized to capture the indelible bond that man has with nature. Indian classical music originated from the sounds of the ancient Vedas and the natural world. The seven notes were born and became the ragas. The ragas are inextricably linked with the rasas or the emotions. When these ragas and rasas come together, they create a perfect harmony with the power to heal the broken and guide the lost. Introducing Nomita Roy Choudhury. Nomita Roy Choudhury lives in the world of music and is a proponent of Robindur Shongi. She has a melodious voice and her soulful renditions truly reflect the heritage of Tagore's songs in their truest form. With her dedication and passion, she has earned love and respect from an avid audience in the Indian subcontinent. To her credit, Namita has several albums dedicated to Tagore songs. Namita is also a prolific writer and poet. Her poems are synonymous with divine love and romance with nature. Nomita is a regular performer in the Kolkata circuit and in Shantiniketan. Shukahe, Elena, 
সহে না যাত না বিবাস গনিয়া গনিয়া বিরে নিশে দিন বসে আছে শুধু পথ পানি চে সভা না সহে না যাত না শুধু পথ পানি চে সখা সহে না
Yeah.
but reality that we live in interconnected time. At the click of the button, the world is at our doorsteps. Technology, while the basis for survival during the pandemic, connecting us to our loved ones and providing some solace, has actually confined us. We live in small boxes where only we only hear opinions that agree with our views and choose to perceive anything else, everything else, as the other. Living in these narrow silos, the echo chambers have deafened our senses, where differences are something to be feared and stamped out rather than embraced. And this is exactly where the creative world can serve as the northern start, guiding humanity towards the light, towards hope, and possibly redemption. Music is universal, ladies and gentlemen. It touches the soul and pulls at our heartstrings, even when we do not understand the spoken language. From the Himalayas to the Appalachian Mountains, musicians sing of the earth and ordinary people and their struggles. They sing of the surrounding land and a connection to the mountain winds, the gargling hoops, and the verdant meadows. As we listen to this world music and see the feet tapping dances, borders are erased, and the human soul rejoices as one singular entity. Ladies and gentlemen, Pasifaglia is an instrumental quartet that specializes in ancient and world music. The group plays a variety of music from the medieval and renaissance eras to the present, mainly from Europe, but also from Middle East and the Americas. Their repertoire includes lute songs, magic girls, canzonas, processionals, and a variety of dance pieces. Casa Pedrea aims to transport listeners to another time and place, from fresh interpretations to ancient music, with emphasis on cross-cultural connections and of course humanity. Ladies and gentlemen, may I take the pleasure of introducing the members of Ensemble Basilica Clear. They are Jean Eliot, Lisa Esperton, Tom Hanna and Molly Johnston.
Thanks so much, folks. We're Formidable Vegetable. We've got a lot of tunes up available to listen to at formidablevegetable.com or in all the streaming places. Please uh, support independent regenerative music for the betterment of the climate and the planet and beyond. And again, thank you for supporting this essential cause. There's possibly no bigger cause to be uh, focusing on right now because it is all of the causes rolled into one. And uh, if, there's, if there's one song that encompasses this idea that we are all connected to every other living thing, it's possibly this one, which is called Trees Eat Us All. Just play it, eh? Why not? <laughs> Designer, you're now a recliner So long and thanks for the yield And your tools left behind Have all sharpened our minds To keep growing the change in the field Well, the future is looking quite shady Under all the ideas that you've grown and to look out the window at food in the ground Gives us power to face the unknown But trees eat us all in the end So plant one for me when I'm gone Then if you hear that I've died You can tell them they've lied I'm just shading out somebody's lawn Tapping into the rhizomes of wisdom You wove them all into a tail And with seeds in your pockets And dirt on your hands You took us in to the belly of the whale You took us into the belly of the whale So go on and tell us another Cause your stories are food for the soul Helping us to see the forest for the trees And ourselves as a part of the whole See ourselves as a part of the whole Yeah, cause trees eat us all in the end So plant one for me when I'm gone So if you hear that I've died You can tell them they've lied I'm just shading out somebody's lawn Now the problems around us are many But the answers come to us with ease Take care of the land, your friends and your family And remember to plant lots of trees Yeah, cause trees eat us all in the end So plant one for me when I'm gone Then if you hear that I've died You can tell them they lied I'm just shaking If you hear that I've died, you can tell them they've lied. I'm just shading out somebody's lawn. Thank you very much. Navabaja of Bhaktapur is an ensemble of nine different drums which is played by a solo drummer with the accompaniment of four different pairs of cymbals, shwams, fipple flutes and natural trumpets.
the first Navabaja ensemble was founded by King Bhupendra Mala of Bhaktapur in 1696 to 1722, who attempted to combine all possible sources of musical sound for the praise of his favorite goddess, Talaju, and the well-being of humans. A little about the ensemble, the master drummers of Nepal is an official traditional drumming ensemble of Kathmandu University's Department of Music. Now, the ensemble consists of seven musicians, including teachers and students of the KU Department of Music. The ensemble was formed by the German Nepal-based ethnomusicologist Gert Matthias Wegner, the former head of department. Among the master drummers of Nepal, there are several musicians capable of playing the Navabaja drums. So the role of the soloist alternates during the performance. The nine drums are always played in the following succession. Dha, Kavat, Dhaka, Dhimaika, Nakika, Panchima, Dhalak, Kavita, and Nagara. The artists include Ravi Kapali and Ujjal Kapali, Buddhalal Manandhar, Vishnu Bahadur Manandhar, Rajkumar Manandhar, Raju Humikha, and Abhaya Krishna Sreshta. Composition will be played on this drum uh, known as uh, Pachima, and uh, the composition is known as Kharzati. Uh, which has many different uh, compositions in itself and then uh, Ravi will be playing rag okay song jati uh, so we'd like to begin now thank you
so this uh, last composition will be played by our very own Razu Yomika on this drum Nagara and he'll play the uh, Tal uh, which is known as Brahma Tal he'll, he'll perform Burma Tal on Nagara and uh, Robbie will be playing same tune okay Brahma Tal on Muhaling so we'd like to start now
world of 240 character tweets and one minute Insta reels. Short attention spans and instant gratification are our guideposts. Globalization and our addiction to cheap disposable goods are destroying our world. Technological change, shifting demographic patterns, increasing urbanization and unthinking industrialization has taken its toll on the natural world. Man has exploited nature for its own selfish needs and the demands of an ever increasing consuming society has pushed nature beyond its natural regeneration cycle. Early man respected the power of nature and learned to coexist with the natural forces. With industrialization, we have destroyed this balance. As the nightmare of the past two years have shown, nature has a demonic power to destroy our world unless we change our ways. The world was brought to its knees and the godlike humans became mere pawns in nature's great game. It was a warning shot fired across the bow, which if unheeded, will destroy the human civilization as we know it. Rising sea levels are destroying the coast. Deadly storms are ravaging parts of the world, while other parts become parched and fields lay barren. Earthquakes, floods and fires have been increasing and the rising sea level from the glacial melt are threatening to drown parts of our world. Climate change has become an ever-present threat. Let us listen now and act. Let us spread the mantra of conservation, of healing and respecting nature and stopping climate change. We introduce Shourendro and Shomajit. Pianist Shourendro and vocalist Shomajit perform, produce, compose music together across the globe. They specialize in curated projects, musical and experiments. The duo has a signature soundscape with the essence of the traditional forms draped in contemporary signatures, loved by music lovers globally and digitally. Shomojit is a vocal student of the legendary classical maestro Pandit Ajoy Chakraborty and performs all forms of Indian music. Shorindru is a disciple of Pandit V. Balsara and Ustad Vilayat Hussein Khan and follows the German pianist Professor Martin Kubert in his new innovative approach of playing the instrument which he now terms as the Indian piano. The football legend Pele has performed with the duo. Asha Bhosle has voiced for this young composers. The duo's chartbuster music series, Tagore and We, is one of the most iconic projects of the songs of Rabindranath Tagore and is recognized globally as a new oriental and orientation of the genre. They have won the Mirchi Music Award for their debut film, Parapar. The duo has performed all across Europe, USA, UK, Singapore, Australia, and the Middle East, besides performing in all corners of India with their creative productions. To mention a few, they have performed at the British Museum, Pink Ball International, Test Match of the Eden Gardens, International Book Fair, Moore's Festival, Indian Museum, Victoria Memorial, Nehru Centre, London and NCPA Mumbai. They have performed extensively for the Indian Army, the Prime Minister and the President of India. They present the World Music Day in Kolkata every year on June 21st as one of the biggest celebration of the day in the country an inspired India concert series every year and are directors of several cultural festivals and productions in India and abroad. They have produced Broadway style musicals Mahabharata, Bombay Mary John and Kohinoor which got them great accolades. They deliver inspirational lectures, musical demonstrations for world famous platforms like TED Talks, different acclaimed schools of music, literary festivals to promote Indian music and oriental ideas. They have delivered lectures at the Sanford School of Music and the Music School in Germany. They organize fundraisers through their concerts to serve important humanitarian causes 
which includes support to flood victims in the Sundarbans or vaccination and medication camps during COVID. They are a direct connect to the youth and have a huge musical followership digitally and physically all across the globe as young ambassadors of Indian music.
Dohar, the word in Bengali means chorus. Dohar is a group of folk musicians from Kolkata, India, with traditional folk instruments of Bengal. The group was co-founded by Rajib Dash and Kalika Prashad Bhattacharya in 7th August 1999. Both the members came to Kolkata from the Barak Valley of Assam. Kalika Prashad and Rajib both were lead singers and leader of the group. Unfortunately, Kalika Prashad died in a road accident near Garub village in Hooghly on 7th March 2017. The remaining members of the band have continued singing under the leadership of Rajiv Das and they always feel the presence of Kalika Prashad in spirit, presenting Doha. <laughs> Sofa, 
सफल जन्म यार की पाव सफल जन्म यार की पाव फूल गाज टीला गोई चिलम धुला मटी दिया रे फूल गाज टीला गोई चिलम धुला मटी दिया रे से फूल फूटी यार उन अगम दो इधर मजारे से फूल फूटी यार उन अगम दो इधर मजारे से फूल फूटी यार उन अगम दो इधर मजारे Interview of Sir David King by Dr. Brian Von Herzen. Sir David King was the permanent special representative for climate change from September 2013 until March 2017. Sir David was previously the United Kingdom's chief scientific advisor from 2000 to 2007, during which time he raised awareness of the need for government to act on climate change and was instrumental in creating the Energy Technologies Institute. He also served as the founding director of the Smith School of Enterprise and Environment at Oxford, was the head of the Department of Chemistry at Cambridge University from 1993 to 2000 and Master of Downing Cambridge College at Cambridge from 1995 to 2000. Sir David has published over 500 papers on science and policy, for which he has received numerous awards and holds 22 honorary degrees from universities around the world and was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society in 1991, a Foreign Fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 2002 and knighted in 2003. Sir David was also made an officer of the French Légion d'Honneur in 2009 for work which has contributed to responding to the climate change 
and energy challenges. The founder of Center for Climate Repair at Cambridge, Sir David King brings a wealth of experience having served as the UK's Special Envoy on Climate Change and as the UK government's Chief Scientific Advisor. Interviewing him today is Dr. Brian Von Herzl. Brian is the founder and executive director of the Climate Foundation, which upholds the vision and the mission to regenerate life in the ocean using maritime permaculture technology. As executive director, Brian leads Climate Foundation's large-scale seaweed mariculture programs to develop sustainable food, feed, and fertilizer. Value chains provide ecosystem life support and sustain blue carbon sinks. Brian graduated magna cum laude in three years from Princeton University with a degree in physics. He holds a PhD in planetary science from California Institute of Technology, where he was awarded the prestigious Hertz Fellowship and has been awarded numerous patents. He directs technical projects worldwide that can transform the way we connect to marine environments. He is the vice chair of the HCI board. I guess one of the reasons that we're doing the uh, climate benefit concert just before COP27 uh, and would love to talk with you a little bit about that as the uh, plans are, are, are coming together and we're really looking forward to, uh, to showcasing that to some extent. Wonderful, wonderful, good. Well, just to open that up, um, the Healthy Climate Initiative in partnership with the Healthy Planet Action Committee has um, put together this concert in order to try to raise awareness as to the benefits of really doing um, positive interventions to try to, uh, well, we call it rebrightening the planet. And uh, it has a lot to do with, let's say, restoring the, uh, the, the reflectance of the planet to its uh, pre-industrial state. Uh, in fact, the Healthy Planet Action Committee is um, actually coming out with a, a vision statement this month that describes a, an essential triad. And that triad involves uh, not only reducing emissions and drawing down greenhouse gases as quickly as possible, but also looking for active ways of cooling regions like the poles, including the North Pole, Antarctica, and I just read about how um, some of the uh, ice sheets have, have been fallen apart even this year in 2022. And then thirdly, to uh, do some uh, active cooling in, in those polar regions to actually improve uh, the, the uh, reflectance in regions like um, the Arctic to refreeze the Arctic and the Himalayas to actually try to preserve some of the glaciers that are melting as the water source for 2 billion people. Um, and that's the focus of this year's uh, climate benefit concert is to help Leslie Fields project in uh, off Kathmandu to actually rebrighten one of the glaciers. But I'd be interested in your perspective on this effort to um, effectively uh, try, to, try to refreeze some of these polar regions and, uh, and get back to a healthy climate in those places. Uh, David, if you, if you might share your thoughts on this, I'd be interested. Yeah, so uh, our work on uh, this in this area is refreezing the Arctic. And uh, the total focus of that is, well, not the total focus. We've got two projects. One is thickening the ice that is formed over the Arctic Ocean during the polar winter months. Um, and this is a process that I feel is a bit like uh, Leslie Field's work, uh, probably not extensible over a large enough area. So we, we know that we can create thicker ice by literally pumping seawater above the layer of ice that's formed. Uh, and we, we create little ice volcanoes on, on the ice. And if you have enough of these, you can thicken the ice very substantially and it has a longer life in the, winter, in the summer. And the other program is simply marine cloud brightening, um, creating white cloud cover, we 
don't believe we can get this fully functional uh, for the next six, seven years. Yes, and I heard that the uh, ice, the sea ice formation could have a significant effect on the melting of Greenland, which would have a profound effect on the sea levels. Is that right? Exactly. So there are two, well, three big impacts. The first is the impact on the jet stream, which is already being felt. The second is melting of Greenland ice, massive sea level rise potential. And the third is the emission of methane from the permafrost regions of the land around the North Pole. And it looks as if there's enough methane that if it was all uh, to enter the atmosphere in a short period, like 20, 24 years, a couple of half-lives of methane in the atmosphere, temperature rises globally could be five to eight degrees centigrade. So we, we're looking at a disaster globally if that happens. Um, the reason I say that sort of short period is because of the explosive release of methane already happening in northern Siberia. Yes, I was very concerned to see all of the pit craters occurring in northern Siberia, and apparently they've been increasing dramatically over the past decade. Have you uh, seen any data on these uh, pit craters on land and even uh, on the seafloor? Yes, yes, I have. Uh, the craters... 50 meters diameter, 60 meters deep. Uh, and uh, quite interesting, you, you, you see they've, they've even got films of the ice beginning to form a hump where there's going to be an explosion. So there's a, a bit of a warning. If, if the ground under you is rising, run like hell. I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> well, does anyone have a sense for how rapidly the number of pit craters is increasing each year? So certainly more than a thousand have been formed so far. That's amazing. Uh, they were first, yeah, first observed, the first one was observed in 2014. Uh, people in a small village living on the permafrost reported to the Russian government a very loud explosion. So they sent the, a team, I think about half a dozen senior members of the Russian Academy of Sciences there, and they took these uh, remarkable photographs. Uh, but subsequently, photographs over the uh, the sea there have shown the pock marks in the floor. It's uh, it's frightening. It really is, and it's an Arctic summer event every year. So, in terms of the the triad, and that is uh, decarbonization, drawdown, and rebrightening the planet, what do you think individuals could do to change the narrative around these? Uh, climate changes and these needs? Yes, I think, I mean, here's your, your very big question. And it is something that, uh, that we would like to work on. And certainly when I talk anywhere, that's the focus of my talk. <clears throat> Somehow we have to develop an understanding of where the extreme weather events are coming from at the moment and where they're going towards. You know, we're, we're already in a crisis. And the second thing is to say, and there's a solution. And it's not going to be easy, but we need to roll this out as quickly as possible because we have no time. Now, I think a very, very difficult question. The tipping point in the Arctic Circle region will go at anything between one and a half and two and a half degrees centigrade global temperature rise. But the Arctic Circle is now heating at four times the rate of the rest of the planet and is at over three degrees centigrade above the pre-industrial level. I think it is a very, very important point to make. Yes, and along those lines, what we're finding with the Climate Triad and the Healthy Planet Action Coalition is that uh, the time scale for uh, emissions reduction is such that the planetary effects are and even the time scale for drawdown requires decades, if not more than a century, to achieve uh, a drawdown of what has taken two, us two centuries to emit into the atmosphere. So this approach of rebrightening the planet, whether it's uh, polar ice or marine cloud brightening or brightening glaciers, uh, really is a, an approach that gets us back towards healthy temperatures in these regions on the way to getting back to uh, 
healthy levels of greenhouse gases. And uh, from that perspective, seems to be essential to provide a timely response to uh, some of the climate challenges that we're facing in different regions, wouldn't you think? Absolutely. I do like your phrase, uh, rebrightening the planet. I mean, because a lot of people say, whoa, don't, don't use another technology to move us into another dangerous zone. But if you say rebrightening the planet, it's, it's almost quite the reverse of what putting sulfates in the stratosphere would do. That's darkening the planet. Uh, and rebrightening means reflecting more sunlight away from the surface. So I like that. I might adopt it. Please do. And uh, furthermore, um, I, I found great mileage in helping people understand how we're bringing the planet closer to a pre-industrial state uh, because we're effectively restoring the albedo of the planet, restoring its ability to shed excess sunlight and, and, and its ability to uh, maintain healthy temperatures. Uh, not to mention my favorite metaphor, and that is the planet is a glass of ice water. And you can add, put lots of heat into the glass of ice water, and it's not going to change temperature until that last ice cube melts. But as soon as that last ice cube melts, your temperature takes off like a rocket. And what we're about to do in the next few years is melt the last ice cube in the Arctic Ocean. All hell breaks loose at that point. I mean, it's bad enough now. But I think if we start with uh, Himalayan glaciers and possibly in the future Greenland glaciers, um, there are limited scale experiments that can demonstrate that it works. And then if it is promising, there are ways to uh, decrease the density fraction, if you will, uh, make the sand even more hollow. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I've been on glaciers and I'm amazed at the amount of sand and boulders and rocks that are all over those glaciers anyway. Uh, so I view adding a bit more uh, hollow sand silica to those in an effort to, um, you know, restore their, their albedo, their reflectance, uh, could actually be really helpful tactically in uh, beginning to put a, a dent on the amount of melting that's presently taking place and affecting countries from Pakistan to China to India and Bangladesh. Well, it's been a real pleasure, uh, David. I really as always. That. Yeah, as always. Have Thank a wonderful you. week and look forward to catching up in a week's time. watershed segment of our program. The name is evocative of the natural phenomena which marks the dividing line, an area where all water flows to a common location. And just like their natural counterpart, these artists today are the turning point. They have significant contributions in their field that have changed the notion of how people view music. In this segment, we will be presenting the works of well-renowned global artists who are bound by one common thread other than being the top of their fields. That is their concern for our planet, their concern about climate change, and their urge to do something about it. Today, they have donated their music to the cause to help raise awareness about the imminent danger of climate disasters at our doorstep. It is our hope that this watershed event will spur each and every one of you to take action. Let this be the watershed event that spurs us to action. In the watershed segment today, we introduce Jolly Gan. Jol, which in Bengali means water. The band took the inspiration for the name from the 1300 rivers that crisscrosses Bangladesh and controls lives and livelihoods. They are Jolly Gan, music of the water. The band is composed of visual artists and theater activists. Their lyrics are based on human stories. 
A number of the songs are written for them, exclusively inspired by root-level stories of love, despair, courage, nature, abstract ideas and beliefs. The language is simple yet deep. It reaches human hearts and melts easily with their imagination. They also use a lot of metaphors that depict various colors and sides of human emotion. Their music composition is very much contemporary yet distinctive, helping them to gain instant popularity. In their own words, we are the children of the soil where the river purifies us. We whisper the symphonies of the genre in soft and soothing voices. Dark at night, our dreams express themselves on a sailing boat in a land of natural abundance. To us, the rivers are like the lives flowing away undeterred. And sometimes they are poignant features of our ethnic roots. We sail away in the world of fantasy and imagination. We aspire to know why birds sing, why the sprinkling of water sounds harmonious. With questions like these churning in our minds, we hum the tunes and sing Jolir Gaan in an unhindered voice. The team includes Rahul Anundo, Rana Sarwar, Abe Siddiqui, Muhammad Masum Mia, Malik Yoshurja, Gopi Devnath, Habibullah Farhan, Orjun Shutrudhar, and D.H. Shubho. Presenting Jolir Gaan. আমরা কোনো যুদ্ধ চাই না দেশের সঙ্গে দেশের মানুষের সঙ্গে মানুষের কিংবা প্রকৃতির সঙ্গে মানুষের ভালোবাসার সঙ্গে মানুষের এই টিকে থাকার সঙ্গে মানুষের অস্তিত্বের সঙ্গে আমাদের আমরা শান্তি চাই সুন্দর চাই ভালোবাসা চাই প্রাণে প্রাণে Oh, my God. 
पता छोट सबुज पता पताटाई क्योंकि एक वृक्ष पताटाई एक छाय दे पताटाई मन करिए दे पतार तले आश्रय नहीं आदि हमें भूले जा गाच के जे गाच के छाय दिए रखे जे गाच के फुल दे फल दे भूले जा 
আমরা শিল্পী আমরা সুন্দরের আরাধনা করি আমরা সুন্দর চাই সুন্দরের পূজারি আমরা আমরা পাতা আঁকি পাতাটাই এতটাই জীবন্ত হয়ে ওঠে যে সেই পাতা দেখেই পাখিরা বাসা বাঁধতে আসে গাছের ডাল ভেবে এই পাতাটাই কখনো আমাদের মাথার উপরে ছাতা হয় আমরা ফুল আঁকি ফুলটা এতটাই জীবন্ত হয় তার রঙে রূপে ঘ্রাণে যে ভ্রমর ভুল করে উড়ে এসে বসে কিন্তু আমরা অসহায় আমরা হতভম্ব হয়ে যাই আমাদের শিল্পী চরিত্র থমকে দাঁড়ায় আমরা আমাদের ক্যানভাসে ঝড় আঁকতে চাই না আমরা আমাদের ক্যানভাসে কোনো অন্ধকার সময় আঁকতে চাই না কিন্তু কি এক দুঃস্বপ্ন আমাদেরকে গ্রাস করে আমাদের ক্যানভাস জুড়ে ঝড় উঠে আমাদের ক্যানভাস ভরে যায় রক্তাক্ত রং আর ধূসর ছাই কিংবা ধুলোয় আমরা গাছকে চাই আমরা পাখিকে চাই আমরা নদীকে চাই আমরা খোলা আকাশ চাই আমরা বিশাল সবুজ দিগন্ত বিস্তৃত মাঠ চাই ভালোবাসা চাই আদর চাই গানে কিংবা প্রাণে আমরা জলের গান ডুব দিয়ে উঠি শুদ্ধ হই গে উঠি জলের গান আমরা ঝড় আঁকতে চাই না তবু ঝড় বয়ে যায় আমরা ঝড় আঁকতে চাই না তবু ঝড় হয়ে যায় আমার উঠানে আমার আমি একটা পাতার ছবি পাতাটা গাছ হয়ে যায় মাথা ভরা সবুজ কচি পাতা গাছটাকে ছাতা মনে হয় আমি একটা পাতার ছবি আঁকি পাতাটা গাছ হয়ে যায় মাথা ভরা সবুজ কচি পাতায় গাছটাকে ছাতা মনে হয় Yeah. 
जलर गान आर घर बेर हई नतून को भ्रमणे नतून को पाखी किंबा फुलर सन्धान जलर गान एक पर एक भ्रमणे बेर हई पृथ्वी ए माथा थे ओ माथा सबा के जान बेचे थको सुखे थको आदरे रखो प्रकृति के पृथ्वी के जलर गान नतून को पथे नतून को गंतव्य नतून को इशाराय